Y'all hear me? Come on, good morning. Good morning, Bridge fam. Good morning. All right, I need a little bit better than that. Good morning, everybody. Yeah. Come on, anybody excited that summer's here? Summer, 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 summer time. I am excited about the summer. Man, I just, uh, man, I'm just excited about a lot of things, man. I'm excited about what God is doing in our church. Um, I know Pastor Derek mentioned it, man, but this last week was off the chain um, over at Conestoga. It was, it was something special. It really was, and uh, super excited today. You know, we got a special day today. Graduation, I don't know, I know we got some people that show up, but how many graduates we got today that we gonna celebrate? Come on. We got graduations today, and uh, so this, this, this message, we have been in a series called Unfiltered Church. We've been journeying through the second part of Acts, um, and I pray, has it been a blessing to you? I pray that you've learned something. Um, you know, our heart and our dream as a church is really to model our, our church after the book of Acts, the early church, and it's been great going on through the journey, but we are coming into a landing today, and I feel like it's fitting because it is a graduation. Sunday, so the message is kind of tailor-made for our graduates, but I believe that God has a word for all of us. Um, one thing that we have uh, realized is as we've been journeying over the last, man, it's probably been about seven weeks, man, we have been journeying and, and the, the early church has gone through a sense of challenges. It started, man, people were excited, you know, 3,000 people got saved. The next day, man, the, 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 the people of God, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the breaking of bread and prayer, and then people were being added daily, and it was exciting. Anybody like new things? It was exciting, man, it was great. But how many of y'all know that stuff runs out? It runs out quick, but over time, they faced a lot of challenges. They had to face, I mean, lots of adversity, a lot of problems. They had to fight through even persecution had to fight through even some of their own prejudices, and biases, and preferences. And as the church continued to grow, man, they, they, they experienced a lot of heartache. And I would just say this, even the graduates, man, um, it's, been, it's been quite some time, 12 years for some of us, graduating high school. Anybody remember, just, can you just shout out when you graduated? One, two, three, what year? Man, a lot of O's, a lot of O's. Any 90s babies, any 90s? Come on, any 80s? Uh oh, uh oh, I see you, coach. I, I see you. What the 70s? We're going to go back. In the 70s? Whoa, really? Come on. 60s? Anybody in the 60s? Okay, I see you. Mama Ruth? What were you? You didn't put your hand up, though. That, that was a little low. There you go. There you go. That was 60s. Class of what? What class of what for you? I know, I know how you, Mama. 64. What class you in? 69. Anybody, anybody been 64? Miss Maxine here? No, she ain't here. Well, come on, can we give it up for everybody? Man, a long, long time. Man, but I just had some memories. Man, I've been excited. I've been going to all types of all types of parties and, 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 and celebrations, but it's been it's been good. But how many of y'all know, man, change sometimes is hard. It's hard. Change is hard, and I just felt like the Lord dropped a little word. As you are navigating through change in a, in, in a new season, and, um, even I just feel like there's a lot of us in this church who are experiencing like a new thing. Just like God's doing something new, the change is coming. How do we embrace change, and how do we continue to grow and strengthen our faith along the way? Um, so I just want to start with this particular scripture found in 1 Corinthians 9. How many of y'all know that we all are running a race? We all are running a race. And I love this particular scripture. It says this, and I believe it's going to help set the stage for this morning's message. It says, don't you realize that in a race everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize. So run to win. All athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away, but we do it for an eternal prize. So I run with a purpose in every step. I am not just shadow boxing. All of us are running a race. Some of us are walking a few weeks ago. Some of us are sleeping. But I believe all of us are in 
a particular race. And this morning, I feel like as we're running the race, what are some things that I feel like God wants us to embrace while we are running this particular race? So three things that I believe that he wants us to embrace. Number one is embrace the moment. Number two, embrace the message. And number three, embrace the mission. Embrace the moment, embrace the message, and embrace the mission. I believe graduates, you have a defining moment. A defining moment. And I'm telling you, man, I am excited. Somebody say, the world is your oyster. There's so many different possibilities. So many things to be excited about. Anybody excited about getting out of the house and going to college? Anybody excited about that? No? Who want to stay home? Okay, I see you. Oh, I see you, sis. But so many different possibilities. Some of you are graduating college and you're going into the workforce. But I truly believe this is a defining moment. A defining moment. And I'm, I'm sure all of us are reflecting on when we, are, when we graduated college or we graduated high school, and this is a great time of reflection. And I want to say, whether you graduated summit cum laude, anybody summit cum laude? Or if you, if, you, if you graduated barely made it lower than anybody, 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 anybody graduated barely made it lower than, I know that was, that was me. I know when I look back in high school, class of 1997, WS Thunderbirds, let's go. I recognize I pretty much wasted those years. I wasted those years. I barely, I barely made it. I remember we had a term paper that was due on a specific day, and if you didn't pass the term paper in, you wasn't going to graduate. And we had all semester to finish this particular paper. The day before that end, well, anybody done that? Anybody, any procrastinators in the house? Okay, I'm not the only one. The day before, I had not even started my paper. And I got a friend, a dear friend, now she's a lawyer. Um, she's uh, about to be a judge. She was one of my best friends in high school. I said, this, I need your help. And I'm so grateful. So we started at probably about midnight. Probably about, about 12.30, I fell asleep. She did my entire paper. I don't say this, I'm not proud of this, but she did my entire paper and was able to turn it in. I, I, barely, I barely made it. I barely made it. But, but some of you guys, maybe it's not graduation, but there are moments in your life that can really change everything. Whether that's changing a career or, or maybe changing, changing, changing places to move. Or, 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 or maybe even relationships. Sometimes there's some good and bad in, in relationships. Maybe, maybe you've lost a loved one and that's kind of been a defining moment for you. Maybe, maybe a child has gone away. Maybe it's a defining moment for you. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's, like I said, it's a career change. Maybe it's changing a church home. Maybe you've experienced some things. But we've all had moments. And one thing I love about moments, moments are just moments. But what you do with those moments can either make you or they can break you. Amen. So I want to look at a moment that I felt like had the opportunity to break two incredible leaders, two church leaders, people who love the Lord, people who are on mission together, people who've been rocking for six years, seeing God do amazing things. And this is where we're going to pick up this particular story. Have you ever rocked with somebody for a while? And if for some reason y'all got in a riff and, and then y'all had to go your separate ways, painful, painful. But this is where we are going to land today and I believe this hopefully will be an encouragement to all of you. So here's the moment. Here's the moment. First we need to talk about real briefly a guy named Paul. Somebody say Paul. Paul. Some of you guys remember, some of you guys have been in church for a while. You know, Paul, his name wasn't Paul the whole time. His name was Saul. And he was a religious leader. And he was actually somebody who persecuted and killed Christians. And he was praised for it. He had an encounter with God, changed him forever. And he ended up being one of God's great and one of our great forefathers in the faith. He ended up writing the majority of the New Testament. This dude was on fire for the Lord. 
And you can read, you can read all throughout some of his epistles. There's so many great things that he was able to do for the glory of God. So this guy named Paul. This other group named Barnabas. I like Barnabas. Barnabas was another man. He was a great man. His name actually means son of encouragement. He actually came along Paul and they, they did some amazing things together. But here's the moment. Here's the moment that I felt like could have defined him. And here's what's going on, and here's where we're going to pick up the story. Sometime later, Paul said to Barnabas, let us go back and visit the believers in all the towns where we preach the word of the Lord and see how they are doing. Barnabas wanted to take John, also called Mark, with them. But Paul did not think it was wise to take him because he had deserted them in Pamphylia. How do you say that? Pamphylia? Pamphylia, that's cool. Pamphylia? All right, that's cool and had continued with them in the work. Y'all see this happen. They were doing ministry. They've been rocking together. This, this, is, this is for years. And they wanted to take this brother. John Mark actually went with them and he was one of the guys, it was three. And halfway during their assignment, he chucked a couple deuces at them. He went back. So now here's a moment. Now they're all back together. They're done with the first missionary journey. Now they're going off to the second. Barnabas, because he was his cousin, I mean, y'all know sometimes family can kind of get in the way. He said, I want to take John Mark, and Paul said, nah, not that brother. This brother deserted us. I don't think we, I don't think you should come with us. And here's what happened. They had such a sharp disagreement. You ever had a sharp disagreement with somebody? That they parted company. Barnabas took Mark and sailed for Cyprus, but Paul chose Silas and left Commended by the believers to the grace of the Lord, he went through Syria and Sicilia, strengthening the churches. A defining moment. What a moment. The best of friends. Paul was a mentor to Barnabas. They've been rocking with each other for a long time, and I know this here hits really close to home for me. When I think about being here for the last two years, so many people that you rock with that you think you're going to rock with forever. And sometimes, sometimes you guys have a disagreement which can result into a lot of heartache, a lot of pain. But what was it, even though they were able to embrace the moment and not get bitter and not get angry at God, they continue to fulfill the mission. I think it's a beautiful thing. Graduates, let me just say this. I really believe this is a defining moment. And sometimes, sometimes you guys want to hurry up and rush to grow up, be in a rush to go hard and take on this next challenge. And I think there are some good things to that. But my hope and my prayer as you walk into this new season that you would embrace the moment, that you would actually do some reflection. You would embrace the people that have helped you along the way. You would do some reflection and you would embrace, you would embrace God in this time as you guys try to navigate through this next season of your life. A couple things that I believe these two did, they leaned in. Number one, they leaned into change. They leaned into change. They went their separate ways. And like I said, sometimes change is hard. Change is hard. Anybody like change? I actually kind of like change. Who don't like change? You just like things done the same way over and over again. But they embraced change. They embraced the new possibilities. They really thought maybe God is actually at work and he's doing something. So I can actually embrace this new season of my life. They embraced change. The next thing that they did that they embraced, they leaned in. They leaned into community. They never went alone. And as you are going seemingly alone into your new space, my hope and my prayer that you would lean into community. I don't think they would have been able to fulfill their missions, both of them, even apart, if they didn't have somebody rocking with them. But here's the deal. As they embrace this moment, what is so clear to me, the second thing they did is they embraced the message. Somebody say the message. The message. As you go up, if you go into college, there's a lot of messages that you're going to hear. A whole lot. The stats say 80% of people, kids who grow up in their faith, they lose it in college. 
Because, man, they're going to be wowed by maybe some of their, some of their uh, professors or some of these other people who have a different set of beliefs as you. But they embrace the message. You are going to hear a lot of different messages and your faith will be challenged. But I would also say, do not be afraid of the challenge. Don't be afraid. My hope is that you would embrace the message. Here's what it says in Acts 16, uh, verses 1 through 5. Just a few scriptures here. It says this, Paul went first to Derb and then Listeria, where there was a young disciple named Timothy. His mother was a Jewish believer, but his father was Greek. Timothy was well thought of by believers in Listeria and Iconium. So Paul wanted to join them on their journey. In deference to the Jews of the area, he arranged for Timothy to be circumcised. Uh -oh. Before they left, for everyone knew that his father was Greek. Then they went from town to town, instructing the believers to follow the decisions that they made by the apostles and elders in Jerusalem. So the churches were strengthened in their faith and grew larger every day. One of the reasons why I felt like Paul and Barnabas could embrace the moment is because they embraced the message. They did not, they did not compromise on the message. And let me be very, very clear. As you are hearing a lot of different messages, this is the message that is timeless. This is the message that don't need to have anything added to. This is the greatest message you will ever, ever hear. And my hope is you would embrace this message. And here's the message. The message is the gospel is good news. Somebody say it's good news. That God, he put on human flesh in Christ. And he lived the life that you and I should have lived. He did everything right. He thought every, he, he, he thought every right thought at every time. Every choice that he made was the right choice. He lived a perfect, sinless, and holy life. And that was the requirement for you and I to be with God. Anybody been there before? Can anybody relate? None of us. None of us could ever achieve that on our own. So he did the unthinkable. Yep, he sent his son Jesus Christ and he lived a life that we shouldn't live and he died a brutal death on our behalf. And then three days later, he rose from the grave proving he was the son of God. And he offers forgiveness and salvation for whosoever would, would turn their ways and put their faith and their trust in him. This is the message. Over here at Bridge Church, we say, man, we belong to God. We belong to him from the very beginning. We belong to him. He chose us. When he created this world, there was peace on earth. And, we, and he created us for us to enjoy him. And he gave us something called free will, the opportunity to choose him back. But guess what we did? We broke the relationship with him. We broke it. He didn't break it with us. And then sin entered the world. And something had to be done. So he bought us back with his life. He bought us back. So that you and I can one day be a bridge of love, hope, and faith to everyone, everywhere, every day to be a part of his mission. This is the message. Don't add to it. Don't take away from it. The message is clear. The message is good news. Despite their separation, Paul and, and Barnabas remained committed to preaching the gospel. Paul continued his mission with Silas, spreading the same message. And I believe this is extremely vital for you on your journey. Don't be afraid of the challenge. Parents, don't be afraid of the challenge. You continue to pray. Pray for the kids. Pray that the faith that you model, that they would truly embrace that faith. They're going to make mistakes. You're going to make mistakes. And when you fall short and you are searching, when you're searching for friends, and you're searching for this new community, you're searching, my hope and my prayer is that you embrace the message. Some people say, man, you need to preach the gospel to yourself every single day. And I pray you will do it again and 
and do it again and do it again that you would never, ever, ever get tired of hearing that message. It's known that it's the only message of hope. It's the beautiful message. My hope and my prayer, this is what Paul says in one of his later scriptures, Romans 8, Roman, Romans 8, this is what it says. It says this, I hope that you can get to this place. And I am convinced that nothing could ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. My hope and my prayers, you would be absolutely convinced. And if you're not there, I pray you would fight hard to try to figure it out so you can get to this particular place because you need to be convinced of this. And I'm not just talking to the graduates, I'm talking to every single person in this room. Are you convinced? Are you convinced? My hope and my prayers, you would be convinced. God wants you to be absolutely convinced in this message. That absolutely nothing, nothing would ever be able to separate you from the love of God. That is in Christ Jesus. He loves you so much. He loves you and he is the hope that you've been waiting for. I know some of us were convinced on a lot of things. My hope, man, I pray that you would be absolutely be convinced of this. Not only did they embrace the moment, they didn't shy away from the moment, they didn't sweep it under the rug, they talked about it, they decided they were going to go and separate. Not only did they embrace the moment, not only did they embrace the message, I believe this is critical, they embraced the mission. They did not shrink back. They embraced the mission. And you can see it as they continue to go and the word of God continued to go forth and the churches all over, which wherever they landed, wherever it takes foot, they, they touched the foot, were strengthened and they grew. Do you want to be strengthened? Do you want to continue to grow? I'm going to speak specifically to the graduates. You know, there's going to be an enticing, especially if you guys are going into, especially a new school. There's going to be a Tyson. It's like, who's going to be my people? Who's going to be my people? We all felt it. Who am I? So some people, they go into sororities and fraternities, or, or they try to join these different groups. And that's fine. You do whatever you feel like. You know what I'm saying? God has called you to do. Be careful. But make sure you do what you feel like God has called you to where he's leading. But I, how I wish I would have embraced, I would have embraced the a group in college that were about God's mission. How, how I wish I would have embraced a, a group where I could grow in my faith. There's so many people ask me, where, where do you think I should go to college? I said, man, where are you going to grow in your faith? I was talking to a guy who's had all these offers and um, someone who grew up in this church, he said, what do you think? I said, man, I need, you need to seek out what campus ministry is out there, what church is out there. Position yourself in a place where you're intentionally about growing your faith. Do that. See what's out there. Don't run off to the first shiny thing. But they embraced the mission. And over here at Bridge Church, that's who we are. The Great Commandment and the Great Commission. Both the proclamation and the demonstration. The Great Commandment, to love God with all your heart, mind and soul, and love others as you love yourself. And the Great Commission is to go into all the world, making disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And here's what it says, teaching them to obey. Teaching them to obey. I was talking to one of my spiritual fathers who was a big evangelist this past week. He's like, man, it's all about baptism. I said, yes. Yes. But it's also about discipleship. And what it happens is, it says teaching them to obey. That happens in community. That happens in proximity. That happens in relationship. It's a both end. Go and find these types 
of people. The church continue to grow and be strengthened. I believe as you embark on this new journey that you will be strengthened as well. Last scripture in conclusion, Hebrews 12. I love this. It says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles us. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning his shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. First scripture I talked about is everyone runs a race. They run it for something. We run it to win a prize. I want to be very, very clear. The prize isn't more stuff. The prize isn't more status. The prize isn't more accolades. The prize isn't more degrees. The prize is Jesus. Jesus is the prize. And as soon as you can settle that to your heart, it doesn't matter what you continue to do. You won't have to be searching for all this stuff. Jesus is the prize. And everything that we have in Christ, we have from the Father. And I believe that you would embrace that. Embrace the moment. I'm proud of you. The moments are just moments. It's what you do with this moment. Embrace the message. Do whatever you can, whatever you need to do. Wrestle out with the scriptures. Don't just take your mom and your dad's faith or someone else's faith. You need to make your faith your own. Because storms will come and you will be challenged. And your message, your foundation, your truth will be challenged. And my hope and my prayer is that you will be able to stand on that. And that you would shrink back. That you would engage and you would embrace the mission. Embrace the mission of God to go into all the world and preach the gospel. That's what our assignment is. And you can do it in your own way. Some of us like to talk. Some of us like to show it. I don't care how you do it, but just, just do it. So graduates, we celebrate you. Can we give it up for them? And all of you who are going through some type of change, all of you, I don't know what it is that God is leading you into. I don't know what season you are in your life. Change is inevitable. But the message of the gospel is changing. My hope and my prayer is that you would hold on to that. Pray with me. I want to pray for these graduates. Where are the graduates at? Where are they at? You all over? All right, all right. Let me just, uh, let's just pray for them. Let me call Pastor Derek. And we're going to have a little ceremony for them. God, thank you. Thank you for moments. Thank you for moments. Thank you for moments like this that we can come alongside and celebrate the hard work done by all these individuals and finish high school and college. I thank you for moments. Even as I'm talking, I just know that we've all reflected on certain moments that maybe shook us, that, that changed the rhythms of our life. Whatever that may be, God, I thank you for moments. Help us not run away from the moment. Like Paul and Barnabas, they faced it. And they decided, and this is it's best that we go our separate ways. But even in the midst of it, there was reconciliation at the end. God, help us embrace the moment. God, I pray that you would help us embrace the message. This message just wouldn't be something that we know in our head. It would get to our heart that we would fully embrace the message of the gospel. It's, it's our only hope. It's our only hope. Help us understand it. Help us understand it. Help us embrace it. And God, help us embrace the mission. I know you didn't call any of us to be on the sideline and just to be consumers, but you asked us all to get in the game in our own way. I pray you would wake us up as a church. Thank you, we're doing a good job, but I just know that there is so much more that you want to do. And I pray specifically for these graduates as they go into this next chapter of their life, God. I pray you would surround them with people who truly embrace the mission, the great commission, to go into all the world and make disciples, Back, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. I pray that they will get 
get excited about that. Instead of all the other things that may college may throw at them. God, would you help us? God, thank you so much for your work. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Mr. Gunner Push. Sometimes that makes parenting difficult, but we have to remember that he is God's and that he's got him. And so I just have a, a short story from when he was in elementary school. He came home one time and he was very heartbroken because there was a boy in his class named Mason who him and his family did not believe that there was a God. 
And Gunnar couldn't imagine that, and he couldn't imagine what it would be like for Mason when he grew up or when he passed away. And, you know, he tried his best to tell him about God, but he didn't believe him, and it just broke his heart. And um, Gunnar also didn't enjoy reading very much, but as a young person, he read his Bible a lot in them because he wanted to learn and he wanted to know God. And so um, we are very excited and hopeful for what God has for his future. Um, we just hope that he always seeks God like he did when he was younger and that he has a heart for everyone to know God and that his heart breaks for those that don't know God and that he just continues to share him. Thank you, Mason. Thank you, Mason. Thank you, Mason. Thank y'all. Thank y'all so much. Look, can I believe you? Yeah. You're good? Okay. I'm not going to have to go to work. Be a bridge and be a gunner. All right. Who you got next, baby? So next up is Alana. Alana graduated from Vincent High School in and she plans to go to cosmetology school. Alana has, come on, mama. y'all, one of our, our very own babies, y'all, Miss Lydia Arnie. Come on, y'all. We, we try to figure out how to, how to call this uh, the, the Arnie Institution, but Lydia has graduated from Arnie Homeschool, and she plans to attend UNO and pursue a career in social work. <laughs> Lydia Arnie. So we we'll invite to the stage her parents, John and Jen Arnie. To share a brief word. Oh, we got Pop saying something. Yeah, I'm probably the only one who could without crying, so. And I make no promises. But, uh, but Lydia's uh, amazing, and uh, you know, one of the uh, benefits of homeschooling is you know, there's a lot of flexibility uh, in, in what we do. So Lydia really took charge of her own education, to be honest. So she really did, uh, she created experiences for herself uh, to learn, whether it was raising chickens or raising children, uh, she did a, a lot of uh, a lot of different things, uh, and uh, it's just been a joy. And one of the things that we really love is the uh, God has laid on her heart a spirit of truth, and so she really is attuned to you know what's right and and just living that out. So I pray as she enters a little further from us into the world that uh, she would continue uh, to have that spirit of truth and always live that out. Let's go, let's go. We got the Arnie Joe. Let's take a, a picture. I got a question. What's y'all school colors? What's the school mascot? Chicken. Chicken. <laughs> I love it, I love it. What you got, man? Next up, we have our resident dancer, Makai Bay. Makai is graduating from Omaha South High School, and he plans to attend Norwalk Conservatory of the Arts in Connecticut. He will be trained and prepared to work on Broadway. Yeah, we're going right to the stage. It's, it's Madly, Monica, Moni, Moni, or Monica. Pain, that's Moni. I am 100% proud 
of both of my kids, but in the last three years, God has made so many surprises and blessings for this person who strictly turned all of our life around. I had both of them being a sports mom. We did football, basketball, baseball, and three years ago he said, I'm done with it. I want to try something new. Wow. And for somebody to start in high school with dance and theater and music, he sung the national anthem for his graduation wow. the other day. And I am just excited on whatever God has planned for him. So no, I'm not sad that he's leaving. No, I'm not gonna be sitting at home doing nothing because I don't have no more kids at home. But I'm gonna be happy that God is leading him somewhere else that none of us have ever been. So that's all I have to say. These are my cousins that got me in jail. Uh, we, we, we some criers. Makai is a dancer, but that's his mom, my big cousin. He's the third best dancer in the family. We're behind us both. And last but not least, y'all, we got Miss Tanaya Golden. Y'all probably like, what's she doing up here? She was here a few years ago graduating from Northwest. Absolutely she was, but now she is graduating from Hutchinson Community College with an Associates of Arts, y'all. Come on. Tanaya is also going to be transferring to Missouri State in the fall to continuing to continue. I'm sorry, playing volleyball while majoring in physical education. Miss Tanaya, and we got Mama Bear coming up. Miss Erin, what you got to say, Mama, about your baby? Um, she's pretty great, um, but we have had some ups and we've had some downs. Um, she loves to play volleyball. She does not love to go to school, but unfortunately she's got to do both. Um, but we made it. What did you say, P-Rob? Thank you, Lordy. Barely, barely, Lordy. Yeah, but we're here. We're here. She's locking it in. She's doing well. Um, and I've been most proud over the last two years of her leadership on and off the court um, at Hutch. Um, if those of you that know her, she doesn't lack in confidence. Um, that's one thing the good Lord blessed her with. Uh, her freshman year, she goes to school about four and a half hours away, and her first tournament of her freshman year was in Council Bluffs. So she was like, tell everybody to come. I'm like, are you sure? Do you think you're gonna play? Like, do you want me to invite a lot of people? Or just, she's like, Bob, invite everybody. 18 on the team. I'm like, okay. But she started and she played in every one of her college games since because she's been that confident doing her job. I'm proud of her. I'm excited to see what happens at the next stop. And we'll be up here in two more years with another degree. Let's go. Let's go. I heard Tanaya's got, she got the mean kill in volleyball. If you want to high five from her, prepare to go to the hospital. Uh, all right, and, and quickly before we take pictures, uh, as a group, uh, two more graduates who aren't here today, they're, they're still with, they're still alive, I'm sorry, that sounds so bad. Um, but they're out of town right now. So we got uh, Isaiah Jones, he's graduated from Miller Woods High School, and he plans to attend college, majoring in engineering and playing basketball. And this young man, another one of our, our babies here at Bridge, um, I wanna try to get y'all here quickly for a very specific reason. Uh, Steve Spurgeon Jr., uh, he's graduating from Jackson State University with a bachelor's degree in, wow, inter interdisciplinary studies. I got you. That's my wife, and thank you. I should have stayed in school. Uh, he plans to begin earning a master's in elementary education to work with our bridge kids. I just added that. Uh, while completing his last year of eligibility in baseball. Uh, real quick, in about 30 minutes, y'all, if you have ESPN Plus, the reason he's not here is because he's playing in, uh, is it the championship game? He's playing in a championship game at 12 o'clock, ESPN Plus. If you have it, support Stevie Spurgeon. He's killing it out there at Jackson State University. We love you, Steve. You wish you could be here. It's on YouTube Stream Live. It's on YouTube Stream Live. It's on YouTube Stream Live. Even better. You don't even have to have a subscription. The SWAC Championship. Y'all, so can we make a noise once again for our 2024 graduates? Come on, Barry, got a picture of everything? Good. Peace and get it. 
good to go. Okay. Well, we got one more. Don't move. Don't move. Happy on seats. I love y'all. Thank y'all so much. Oh yeah, we I'm sorry. Yeah, let's just pray for it. Can we all stand for a moment? Um, as we go again, thank you so much everybody for coming. Um, and you got some punch and some cake, you know, uh cookies. Cookies, 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 cookies. Afterwards. Um, so please stick around. Um, but let's let's pray for them. Um, here's what I'd love for you to do. I would love to this ain't your kid. I want you just to envision this your kid, okay? I want you to pray for them like it's your kid. But I want all of us, there's something about all of us coming together and reading them. But just in your own words, if you want to pray out loud, you can pray. If you want to pray in silence. But let's just take a moment. I just want, I just want to shower them with so much blessing and prayers from all of us. And I just think something supernatural will take place. Ms. Vicky, I'm putting you on the spot. Come on up here. Is that all right? Oh, Can you pray for them? All right. I just felt fine. Let's pray. Let's, 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 let's pray. Let us bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, first and foremost, Lord, we want to thank you and just pause and just acknowledge you as our Savior. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be your child, for allowing us to be able to come before you, Lord, and to really just thank you, Lord. Not asking you for anything just yet, Lord, but just thank you for allowing us to be here today. Father, your mercies are brand new every morning. And Father, we just thank you for allowing us to be able to just witness another day. Father, we come before you, oh God, because we are your children. And we come before you, oh God, because these graduates, Lord, they are walking with you. They're a walking testimony, oh God. The fact that they want to even open their Bibles and learn more about you says a lot about their character and who they are. But more importantly, Lord, it's their parents, their guardians, and the people that have fed into them and mentored them, Lord. Lord, we know the parents can't do it all. And so it takes a village, Lord, to surround them with the love and to just let them know, oh God, that we care about them as much as you care about them. And so, Father, we thank you for the journey that they've been on, the highs and the lows and mountains and the valleys. But through it all, you have been with them. And Father, this is not the end, but it's just another chapter in a long, successful book that they are writing. So we just pray, Lord, that as they finish this chapter in their life, that they take what they've learned, Lord, and apply it to even more, oh God, because the world is waiting to consume them. But Father, we pray, Lord, that what they have been taught, that they will take it and let it just seep into their hearts. And Father, that they take that and be a light, a salt of the earth, that wherever they go, their footprints will be left for someone to come and say, there's something about you that's different. And so, Father, let them be the salt and the light amongst their peers. Because we know, God, that the world needs you. And they can be an example and a vessel to be used by you. So we thank you for their successes. We thank you for what's about to happen. But, Father, more importantly, we know that you've got them in the center of your hand. And as they leave and they go their various ways, that the parents will know that you got them and that they are just a phone call away. So, Father, let them know they are loved. We love them, oh God. We love them in our own. And we can't wait what you're about to do with them and for them, oh God. And so, Father, we just ask that they just go with you and that they take you with them. And that wherever they go, that someone can come to them and say, you know what, I want to learn a little bit more about the Jesus you worship because I need them. So, Father, we just thank you and we love you for all of the graduates that are here, the ones who are not here, and even the babies that are in the back, Lord, that you have still continuously touched. 
So just thank you and we praise you, oh God. We just thank you and we praise you. And we do say hallelujah we praise you, oh God. Because you're worthy to be praised. Worthy, oh God. I can look back on God and see these graduates. It was because of you. Not anything that we did, but because of you, oh God. That you had them, oh God. But they didn't think that they would be able to make another step forward, oh God. You had them. And we just thank you, oh God. And we praise you. And we celebrate our graduates today. So somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. All right, graduates. Y'all say hallelujah. Like that. Hey, let me just, uh, God, thank you so much for what you've done today. We seal it, and I just pray that we would go, and as we would go, we would go and be a bridge. In Jesus' name, amen. Go in love, go in peace. Stick around, have some cookies, have some punch. Thank you so much.